right. Welcome back, Internet. Welcome back to our weekly live stream. My name is Alicia, and in this week's live stream, we're going to talk about some tips for improving your English spelling. This is something many of you have asked about. Uh, it's difficult because there are lots of different issues depending on the country and depending on the language you speak. But today I'm going to talk about some ideas that hopefully can help you in improving your spelling. So we're going to take a couple minutes live uh, to wait for everyone to join. As you join, and even if you're watching later, please make sure to hit the like button on the video. It really helps us because other people can find the lesson. Of course, share too. We really appreciate it. Uh, but we're getting everything rolling on Facebook and on YouTube. So please check us out on one of those resources. I see YouTube is up. Hello, YouTube. Uh, Toya from Indonesia. Hello there. Fabiano from Brazil. Uh, hello, Andy and Girme and Sabera and Rashidi. Hello. I think Facebook will be up. Ooh, Facebook will be up in just a moment and we'll begin. All right. Good. Uh, so if you're joining, yes, today's topic is improving your English spelling. I'm going to talk about a few tips to do that. It's a good one. This is something actually we have, uh, I'll talk about it later, spelling uh, competitions in, in like elementary school. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay, is Facebook up? Yes, Facebook is up. Hi, Facebook. Carlo and Eunice and Wilson and Robinson and Isaac and Hanak Karnan and Rudy. Hello, Facebook. Good. Everyone is here. So as I said, please don't forget to hit the like button. It's super, super helpful for us. Today, we're talking about uh, improving your spelling. So let's begin in just a moment. Quickly, one quick announcement. Uh, I think I have a picture today maybe yes maybe yes yes yeah okay uh yesterday i shared a video a quick video on instagram but yesterday davy and i uh shot some new episodes of english topics but if you have not seen uh the recent episode of english topics this one was a really funny one uh check the youtube channel for some really good uh some good episodes of that series uh we made some new ones yesterday, so please keep an eye out. Please watch for those. Uh, but some new episodes will be coming soon, too. So definitely check that out uh, on the YouTube channel as well. Okay, good. Uh, but I think we're about three minutes in, so perhaps we can start today's lesson, improving your English spelling. Ta -da! Actually, I'm going to talk about this rule, I before E except after C. I will talk about this later. This is, this is, okay, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about it later. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get rolling. And of course, during the lesson, please feel free to send your questions and I will try to catch them. It's very fast, the chat sometimes. Anyway, Let's get rolling. All right, so let's begin with uh, tip number one. I laid everything out here. The first tip is the most basic thing, but I think it's the most important thing you can do to improve your spelling, and that is read. Read. So it's, it's really important because the words are written on the page. You can see the spelling. It can help you better understand grammar. Uh, so it's like it's like a full package really it's like spelling and grammar and you get to find like writers you enjoy and stories you enjoy um, I would say this is something you should probably expect to do every day constantly like it's something that you need to do all the time so not just reading like you know one hour a month or something but just reading a little bit every day um, so another point about this though is be maybe careful, I don't want to say careful, but please choose carefully the things that you read. So if you want to improve your spelling, make sure you choose things that are edited. So that means someone checked the text to make sure it's correct. So make sure you're reading things that are correct. If you read only like Twitter or Facebook or other social media posts, there's a chance that the English is not correct. Also, like we're human, we make mistakes, typing mistakes. Typing mistakes are called typos. Um, so there's that kind of danger. Uh, also, sometimes uh, people 
intentionally. That means they purposefully use incorrect grammar or incorrect spelling for a variety of different reasons. So I would recommend when you read, choose books or choose magazines or choose like online newspaper resources. This is a great thing to do. If you're not sure where to start, uh, a good, I think, tip is to think about your hobbies or your job. So what is it that you need to know or you want to know how to do? You want to know more about that and look for online a resource in English that you can read about. So like a blog you follow. Like if I wanted to find information about editing or English teaching, I could find, and I do, check uh, blogs and articles regularly about that topic. So this is a great and important step for your spelling and for uh, grammar as well, and for just language learning in general. So this is our first tip, reading. Please read, please read, everything should read. Okay. Let's go on then to the next tip. Next tip is very different uh, from, from uh, the first one. The next tip is actually a game. Maybe some of you know uh, these. These are called crossword puzzles. Crossword puzzles. So we can break this down. Cross, you can see this is one example. I made a very simple example here. Cross is this motion. So they're moving across. These are words that cross each other. This is a very simple example of a crossword puzzle. Uh, so puzzle means like kind of a game, a thinking game. A crossword puzzle is a word game, essentially. So when you make or when you do a crossword puzzle, each of these, each of these like rows of boxes, this should become one word. Each of these should become one word. And your job in doing the puzzle, you have to decide the correct word that fits into each box and they have to connect. So this means you have to spell things perfectly. You cannot make a mistake because if you make a mistake, the puzzle, you can't complete the puzzle. So let's try one. I made a really, really simple crossword puzzle here. Uh, so let's imagine, let's look at this one as number one across. So if the tip here, um, every, every crossword puzzle has a set of clues for each line. So if I say for number one, it's a sour yellow fruit, a sour yellow fruit, I have to think, okay, what's one word that means a sour yellow fruit? If you think you know the answer, you can send it in the chat. I don't know if the timing's right, but if you think you know the answer, Send it, but it is lemon. So you can see each letter fits into one box. That's kind of the idea. That is the idea of a crossword puzzle here. So we then need to think about what goes this way and what goes that way. So um, you have to kind of think about all the different things that will fit into each of these boxes. So maybe like down here, uh, I could say, let's see, something that costs no money something that costs no money. Uh, so here it'd be like F-R-E-E, -E, free. And then some word needs to like connect these two. So you have to think of all these like different words that might fit and try different words. So some people, when they feel really confident in these crossword puzzles, they will write crossword puzzles in pen. So that's kind of like a confidence move for sure. Yeah, nice one and nice. Thanks for sending your ideas there for sure. Um, so these are really fun to do. Uh, you can find very difficult ones. Um, so these aren't just about words and vocabulary. Um, also, when you get to advanced levels of crossword puzzles, you need to know about science, about history, about literature. You have to think of lots of different things to get the word correct. So um, I would recommend if these are new to you, start with some easy ones. Um, you can just Google, do a quick Google search for like free and easy crossword puzzles to practice. So this is an example of a really basic one. Like these are much, much larger actually. I just chose a couple of easy words to begin with, but this is the idea. The words need to fit together in a puzzle like this. This is really, really fun. Okay, so please check this out. Uh, it's great to practice your spelling and it's fun to do. You can do it alone or with friends. So give this a try. All right, good. 
I think, let's see, we're 10 minutes in, so we can take a break for now, I think. Um, yeah, thanks for sending your guesses, too, in the channel. Uh, nice. All right, so uh, we'll take a quick break. As always, we have free stuff for you guys. Yay. I was thinking for today, uh, a nice one you might check out, a nice free thing you might check is this a uh, business English PDF. So this is for free. You can find the link in the description of the video on YouTube. That's below the video on YouTube in the description. Or you can find the link for this above the video on Facebook. So please click the link and download this. Uh, this is just one example, but this is a free PDF you can download. Uh, so when you're writing business emails, Spelling is extremely important. Like, if you don't use the correct spelling, uh, it might look really bad. It probably will look really bad. So um, these are probably some good phrases to know if you're using English at work. Maybe take a look at this uh, just to get a couple of useful expressions. Um, like, oh, like back here is job titles. This is another thing it's important to spell correctly. So maybe take a look at this um, and try to review the spelling uh, for the words you're going to use at work. Very important, I think. Mm. So this is for free. You can find this uh, below the link, below the link, below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook. Yeah, there's a big list of everything there. So we have lots more, um, lots of different topics to check out. So please take a look at those. They are all for free. Hooray. So check those out. Um, yeah, soon today. Do it now. All right, let's continue on then. So if you are just joining today's live stream, sorry, if you're just joining today's live stream, please make sure to hit the like button and share if you like as well too. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's continue on though to the next spelling tip. The next spelling tip is number three. But oh, number number three. Okay, number three. Number three here is spelling contests. It's spelling contests. So I mentioned this at the very beginning of today's lesson. We have in the United States a spelling contest for I think elementary school and maybe for junior high school students. Uh, I'm not sure the age limit on it. But we have a spelling contest. It's called the Spelling Bee. The Spelling Bee. This is a national contest for kids uh, to improve their spelling and like to compete against each other to be the best speller uh, in the country, actually. So why did I include this here? Because um, the spelling contest has some rules that I think are really helpful for people who are studying English and who are studying spelling. So I'll tell you like the basics of this contest. The basics of this contest, in the contest, I participated in this in like fourth grade. I won my school's contest in fourth grade. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, the, the contestant will stand on the stage and an announcer, what they call a pronouncer, someone will say a word to the contestant. The contestant has to spell the word correctly. If the contestant makes a mistake, they're out of the competition. So this is a spelling contest, a spelling contest for kids. But kids uh, can ask questions to help them guess the correct spelling of the word. So those are the things I wanted to mention. For spelling contests, some things uh, kids think about when they participate in this contest and that you can think about are one, they can ask about the definition, the definition of the word. So definition means what does the word mean? Definition, sorry, it's hard to see. That's D-E-F-I-N-I-T-I-O-N, -I -I definition. So the definition of the word. They can ask what's the definition of the word to guess how to spell it. They can also ask about the part of speech. Part of speech. How is the word used in a sentence? Is it an adjective? Is it a noun? Uh, so they have to ask about, or they can ask about how the word is used in a sentence. The part of speech of a word. How is it used? They can also ask for whew, an example. An example of the word in a sentence. 
So when you're looking at a word that you don't know as well, you can think about the way the word is used in the sentence too. That might help you a little bit. Another thing, they can ask about the language of origin. The language of origin of the word. So language of origin, origin means like the original place, the original place the word came from. So maybe the word originally, originally came from the Greek language or originally came from German or originally came from Spanish. So the language of origin is something else you can think about. Finally, they can ask about alternate pronunciations. Alternate means different. Alternate pronunciations. Alternate pronunciations of the word. So this means, is there a different way to pronounce the word? You might think, mm, I know a word that sounds kind of similar, but I'm not sure. So there might be alternate pronunciations. So these are all things that you can think about when you're reading a word and when you're trying to spell a word, like thinking about all these little things. Over time, after like you've studied for a while, you will start to find some patterns in speech. So these are all things that I think can help learners and uh, anyone interested in studying spelling. So uh, check out the rules for the spelling contest. I know this is a lot and it's hard to see. If you want more details, Google the spelling bee, the spelling bee contest, the spelling bee competition. Uh, all the rules are on their website. So check that out. Okay. Then this, then this part, this goes into my fourth tip for today. My fourth tip for today. Please read some comments. Oh no, I'm missing comments. Uh, probably this class is not live. It is live, Adriano. Uh, hello from Vietnam and hello to everybody in the comments. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi. Um, if you have questions, let us know. Someone says they have participated in a spelling bee. That's nice. That's cool. Yeah, it's good. It's fun. It's positive, I think. Okay. Um, let's go into the fourth tip. Is it okay? I'll go into fourth tip now. Yes. Okay. All right. So fourth tip, this continues into the fourth tip, which is to learn some basic spelling rules. And by this, I mean some very common ways, for example, to end words or common uh, exceptions. So things that are a little different. Some examples of this are words that end. So this, this dash means like before the end of a word. It plus T-I-O-N, so like shun, that shun sound, like um, celebration, invitation, for example. So T-I-O-N makes that shun sound. So that's a rule that you can remember. T-I-O-N makes a shun sound. Another one is this A-B-L-E ending, able, able. So what's a good example? Considerable is one. So it has that bl sort of sound, but think about words that end in these kinds of uh, or letter patterns. So these are a couple examples of rules. Um, another one, I put uh, ed here, ed, it's hard to see, sorry, ed, because uh, ed has a few different pronunciations. There's the id, there's the ed, and then there's the d, the soft d ending. So just remember your past tense, regular past tense spellings as well. Another one to remember is words that end in gh, like enough for example. So enough makes an F sound. When we pronounce the word enough, it sounds like an F at the end of the word. But the spelling is G-H, G-H. So these are a few things to remember, a few kind of exceptions, differences to remember. Um, other things, depending on your language, you might have trouble or it might be difficult to remember um, certain like differences between letters. Some very common examples I've seen with students are uh, first the TH sound versus the S sound. So a great example is think versus sink. Like how do I remember? Like, like I need to make sure to always use the correct spelling TH, like I'm thinking about, and sink, like the place where you wash your hands, S. So think about those words that are always difficult for you and try to focus on those, practice those a lot until you can remember them. 
Yeah, think and let it sink in. Nice one. Okay, another great example of this is R versus L. R versus L. Uh, this one is difficult for some people to remember, especially where like the uh, the American English R sound is not common in your language. Um, but it's really important to remember these. This is one where like choosing the wrong spell can cause miscommunication. So for example, like fry and fly. If you spell that wrong, if you choose the wrong one, you could miscommunicate. Or like lice and rice is another classic example. Um, so these are words that have totally different meanings. Uh, it's important to remember the correct spelling. So to remember that, practice. It will take some practice. Okay. Oh, also, yeah, I wanted to introduce one more thing. Actually, control this. Can we see today's thumbnail? Sorry. Uh, like over here. Thank you. Okay. This is another example of a rule. So remember that not all rules are 100% like usable all the time. They're not perfect all the time. This is a very famous example <laughs> of a common rule. I was taught this rule when I was uh, like an elementary school student. I remember this rule, but this rule is not always true. So I'll read it. It's hard to see maybe. The rule is I before E except after C. I before E except after C. So one common problem, even for native speaker children, is remembering, is it I first? Is it E first? When you're trying to spell something. So for example, a word like science, let's, let's keep that there. I'll put a word here. Here's a great example. Here's a word that kids have problems with, the word science. So we use this rule, this I before E except after C. Here we have a C in the word, and then I and E come after that. So this is an example where we have a C, therefore I should come before E. I should come before E. I before E except after C, but it's not always true. <laughs> so you have to think about, like there are some general rules uh, that you have to kind of keep in your head as a good guideline but then you have to remember there are cases where it doesn't always apply. So like an exception to this is the word weird. Weird. So there's no C here, but E becomes, or E comes before I. So it's like, these are some kind of exceptions. Yeah, chief, chief works though, chief works though. So C, <laughs> chef. Uh, so keep in mind that there are some of these rules. Yes, there are some of these rules, uh, but they're not always like perfect guidelines. So keep that in mind. Uh, and if you can remember these little patterns, if you can like invent your own pattern, it might be good for you. Yeah, there is another example too. So E and I are commonly confused. Alrighty. So let's take one more break. Ta -da. Okay, thank you. So let's take another quick break. Uh, today's lesson, if you are just joining, is about ways to improve your English spelling. I showed you guys this business English PDF before, but maybe another important situation. I know many of you are students. Uh, I know a lot of you are students. So um, when you're at school, it's also important to have good spelling. So this means, uh, of course, these are phrases you can use in class, uh, but maybe just a couple of um, expressions to think about um, for your school experience in general. These, like your school subjects, are a good example uh, of some things where, you know, spelling might be difficult. So like in chemistry, for example, there are some um, difficult to spell words, I think. Um, so you can consider something like this. Uh, this, this is free, by the way. You can download this uh, on the website. This could be something good to review, uh, to review your spelling or just to think about um, for your studies. A couple vocabulary words there. Anyway, those are all of the ones, all of the free PDFs that are available on the website. So please go to EnglishClass101.com and download those. They're all free. You can find the link 
below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook. Check it out. Alrighty, good. Yeah, and don't forget, if you're just joining, don't forget to like the video and share the video. Much appreciated. Phew. All right, we have just a couple more things. Uh, PDF. Yes, they are PDFs, Jai, on YouTube. They are PDFs, so I have I have a bunch of them here. Like, I'm only showing a few, but there are like, what are we at, like 13 now? I don't know. Like, there's a bunch of them that you can download. These are all free PDFs, so if you don't have internet access when you want to study, that's okay. You can download these to your computer or like to your smartphone. Um, so you can check them anytime. So yes, they are PDFs. You can print them as well if you prefer that. Check it out. They are free. Okay. Uh, Alva, hello from Peru. Hi. Um, let's see how pronunciation comes. G and color? I'm not sure about your question. From Mongolia. Hi there from Mongolia. Um, can we get this video to watch later? Neha on YouTube. Yes, uh, this video is being recorded now. <laughs> you can check this uh, if you want to watch this video later. If you want to watch this video in like slower speed also later, you can find it on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. So search for English Class 101 on either YouTube or Facebook. You should find it no problem. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue on to the last couple things. Yeah, the last couple things for today's lesson. Uh, our last tips for today. Ta -da. Let's go to number five. Number five is watch English media with subtitles. Watch English media with subtitles. Subtitles. So this is like the words that appear at the bottom of the screen. I know many of you watch our videos with subtitles. That is perfect. I think that's a great idea. So one, uh, it's great because maybe you can catch all the words that the people are saying on whatever you're watching. That's one. But two, if your subtitles have been properly prepared, your subtitles will have the correct spelling of the words that the people are using. So this is a great way to practice spelling and it can help you when you find a new word. Yeah, properly prepared. <laughs> I mean, if the, if the subtitles have been spelled properly, that's what I mean, that's what I mean. So watch English media with subtitles. So you can see like on our YouTube channel, our a lot of our videos uh, have subtitles on them. It does take time to prepare subtitles, but there are also automatic subtitles you can check as well. Um, so, but we do try to put subtitles on our video. So if you have not seen that on the YouTube channel, there's a little, I think it's a CC button. You can click that button and turn on subtitles if the video has some subtitles prepared. So please check that out. That is a good resource, a good way uh, to uh, practice your spelling and to uh, like be able to understand more of a conversation too. Okay, so that's another one. You can do that with TV, with movies, uh, YouTube videos, all kinds of stuff. All right, so that's another big tip, really good one. I do that when I uh, practice the other language I'm studying. Okay. Uh, oh, T. Hi, T. Fellas. Ellen's show is fascinating. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, a talk show, doing a, like watching a talk show, can be really, really good because you always have the same host in front of you. Like you know the host and the host's way of speaking, but the host will have guests on the show, and so you kind of get to see ways like other people speak. So mm -hmm. talk shows can be great. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's continue. Two. The final tip for today. Final tip for today is maybe the most, well, I'll just say it, practice. Practice is the final tip for today. This is, there's no, there's no replacement. You have to practice. Uh, so that means, uh, like I said, studying is a form of practicing. That means writing words. Um, I find personally um, that physically writing 
not just typing or texting the words that I'm studying, but physically writing the words helps me to remember it more. So that could be helpful for you, a method of practice. Um, so make sure to practice. Um, other ways you can practice, honestly, you can play like spelling games with your friends. You can play spelling games. You can try word games like I talked about here. There are lots of word games um, online as well. If you just Google for like English word games or vocabulary games, you can find a lot and a lot are really simple too. So just find fun and interesting ways to practice. And you might be surprised too at how much fun it is to play a spoken word game too. That's something I did and sometimes do with friends and family now. So practice and find some ways to enjoy your practice. It's very important. So a good one. Oh yeah, another common one, maybe you know this, is uh, the game, oh, I won't write it here, Scrabble. There's a game called Scrabble. I'm out of space, where could you guys see? Uh, I don't know. Oh, are you gonna write it there? Scrabble, and can you write words with friends too? Sorry, Scrabble. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Words with friends is the name of the game. Sorry. <laughs> I want to give a couple recommendations for um, phone based word games that you can try that are actually really, really fun. Yeah, thank you. That's perfect. Okay, so a couple quick recommendations. If you, um, if using your phone is something you prefer, um, you can try these two things. Scrabble is a very famous um, board game that's a word board game. That's this, essentially. However, with Scrabble, you have to create this, and then your friends have to make new words from your words. So Scrabble is really, really fun. Um, but if you don't have that game, if you don't have like a group of people, it's not easy to do, you can find this. Words with friends is basically Scrabble, but it's on your phone and you can play with people from around the world. If you don't have a friend to play with, it will match you with someone. So this is a really fun way to play, um, to play this kind of game. So give it a try. It's really, really fun. And actually in this application, if you spell the word incorrectly, it will give you a notification. So this can be a really fun way. So you can download this free from the app store. You'll lose friends, <laughs> I hope not. I hope you don't lose friends. So this is a great way you can start uh, practicing um, with a game today. Okay, but that is it for today. So those are six things you can think about to improve your spelling. I hope that you found something new and or interesting. Um, I think, personally, I like crossword puzzles. I don't do them very often, but they're really, really fun. So check them out. And of course, practice and of course, um, try to create things yourself. That's also really, really useful. Yeah. yeah, so good luck improving your spelling. It's tough, but it's always happening. It's always going on. All right, we have to finish today's lesson though. So thank you all so much for joining in this week's live stream. <laughs> live stream, thanks for joining this week's live stream. Uh, we will be back next week, same time, same channel, same blackboard, same human. Um, we'll be back next week on June 27th, June 27th, Wednesday, June 27th. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that is New York City time. Our topic will be text slang, text slang. So if you saw our internet slang live stream, it'll be a little similar to that. But text slang will be specifically words you use, uh, short words usually, uh, when you're sending text messages to your friends on your phone. So please join us next week for text slang. If you don't know uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in your time zone, please Google it. Please Google it. It will give you the answer very quickly. Google is amazing. All right, but we'll finish up for today's lesson. Please don't forget to go download your free stuff for today. There's all kinds of free stuff uh, uh, from the link. Are you gonna go here? <laughs> from the link in the description uh, on YouTube or from the link above the video on Facebook. So please check this stuff and more stuff out. You can find it all for free. 
Uh, so please do that. Uh, also, thank you as always for liking and for sharing the video. We really appreciate your support. So we'll finish there. I hope you have a great day, a great evening, and a great weekend. I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.